another episode of Situations and Conversations. I am your host, Trey Renee. And as you know, this season, we are all about amplifying young voices. Well, you know who's going to do that with me today? <laughs> the fabulous Poison Waters, everybody! Hi. <laughs> I am so happy to have you here! Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We haven't seen each other in a while. I know, it's been, mm, it's, yes, a while. well, this whole pandemic. Yes, I know. And but then we, before we, that, it was a little bit of time. Yeah, and now we look good, we're here together. Yes, we do! We're Thank vaccinated, <laughs> we're celebrating. 100% vaccinated. That's right, so we're all good. Party, ready, ready to party. Ready to party. We're I've gonna been do ready some to party, but okay. We're gonna do some of that. I not, can hardly wait. Well, we can do that today. I was okay, gonna I'm say like, not look, today, but you yes, got some can. bottles back here. So what's going on? <laughs> Where's this party? Do you these know open what? up? I do have some bottles, but um, okay, they're we'll, for later. Okay, we'll discuss that later. Yes, okay. yes. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. This is a fun. You are, you are to me, and I think to a lot of people, an icon in this community. I mean, I I think about you and I look at you and I just feel nothing but joy, love and light that comes from you. Thank you. Have you always been this like joyous person? I kind of have and you know, I remember even like in school, grade school, middle school, high school, teachers just saying, "You just light up the room. Mm -hmm. You just bring, you know, whatever." And I, that comes from you know, growing up uh, poor, growing up in um, a multiracial family, growing up, I always say I'm the middle child, but really there were four of us. I decided a long, well before I even knew what I was doing, I'm bringing my own joy to my own life. There's so much, there's so much negativity and so many reasons to be down on yourself and the world, you know, coming down on you, that I just brought my own joy everywhere I went. And sometimes people think I'm crazy, so like that. <laughs> That dude's a little too happy, but I'm just always been that way, and it's just you know there's and then now of course. Well, I tell you what, you definitely do light up an entire room, and in this case, an entire set. Oh Soon God. as you came, everybody's like, ah, it's all loud and yay, we're having a good old time, and and anybody that can meet my loud, I'm all right, about. Right, right. That's I know. That's why I'm hanging out with you is so great because people don't be like, dang you loud, no, dang we loud. <laughs> So that's okay. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Now, you talked about growing up. Where did you grow up? So I was growing up mostly in Park Rose, so East County. And uh, we moved here in 1979, my family did. And back then, there wasn't a lot of brown skin mm -hmm. in Park Rose in East mm -hmm. County. So uh, my sister and I kind of stood out a little bit. And uh, we just made made do, yeah. make it happen. Yeah, well, you're definitely doing that. Yeah, right. With all the fabulousness that oh comes Oh, my gosh, with you. yes. I'm, I'm the sparkliest thing to come out of Park Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of sparkly and yeah. fabulous, I want to know, when did you realize that you were more fabulous than others? Well, again, as a child, mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. if we were singing in choir, these other people just were going, wah, wah, and I said, I'm, we're going to sing. I wanted to, you know, they're like, okay, Kevin, you're singing a little too loud. You're dancing a little too much. Uh -huh. And um, then also just, you know, in any time I had an opportunity to perform or an opportunity to be like, Oh my gosh, all attention on me. And it kind of goes back to that, the way I grew up, I never felt like I stood out because the, the older uh, sibling, the younger sibling, the one, the only daughter, they got like all the attention I felt. I've always been able to notice, and I don't know if this is good or bad or if it's egotistical, I always notice the people that aren't trying their best, but they're still going for it. Hmm. And I'm like, I never want to be that person. I always want people to be like, he put in 110%. Right. You know, I don't ever want to be the one like, well, sure, you know, you, you could sing, you could play the instrument, and you just did it. I didn't want to do bass level. I wanted to, like, go for it. Well, you're definitely doing that. <laughs> I mean, and then some. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I remember seeing you on stage for the first time. And I had never, I hadn't, hadn't met you yet. And I was at Darcel's Club. And I thought, who is that? I mean, there's a number of beautiful queens yeah, up there. Yeah, sure. but, but for some reason, you yeah. stood out. Yeah. And then... I was like, oh my God, Poison Waters is coming over here. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this or not, but you were walking the room after the performances and everything, and, and you came over, and I was like, and I, don't, I rarely am at a loss for words. Right, right. You were like, hey, how are you? You know, okay, how are you? You know, how you doing? And I was like, fine. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, I just felt like, OMG, oh I am in the presence of someone who <laughs> knows who knows who they are, is totally comfortable in their own skin, and I want to be like that. You know, I know maybe not necessarily be a drag queen, right. but I wanted, you were giving off energy of, I, I am confident. Right. And that is, that is something that most people need. Yeah. A lot of people don't right. have that. Right. Right. And 
and being in your presence, I'm just giving you all your flowers, okay. right? With being in your presence, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get to know her. She's amazing. <laughs> and, um, and then since then, I mean, right. we've done many, many yeah. things together. Yeah. You've been on a couple of shows with me, but then I've come and judging with you yeah. at Darcell's. And, yeah. and, and that's why I wanted you here also, because oh, I feel like when we are amplifying young voices, these young people need what you are giving off. Right. All the confidence to right. be comfortable in your own skin. How did you get to that point? Well, that's funny you said that about, you know, young and empowering other people, because when I first came out um, in the late 80s, and I didn't know what a drag queen was, I never heard of a drag queen. Again, I just knew I had done theater and, and music in school, and that to me was like, okay, that's, that's where it is. I guess I peaked, you know? And then uh, going to see the at, the at the underage club, they would, we would be dancing, have a good old time, and I loved to dance. But then at midnight, they'd stop it to do a drag show. And at that point, I didn't like them. I was like, because I wanted to dance. I, I had to stop. Drag queens would come and go, and I'm like, eh, each week. Well, then, and they were all like my age. They were, you know, underage club. Well, then one time, they had special drag queens. They said a special show, girls from Darcells and the Embers, and places that I didn't even know what that meant at that point. And the curtain opened, and I realized that's when it hit me. There were four beautiful black drag queens. Misty Waters, Rosie Waters, Lady Lane Peacock, and Sarisa Fourteen of all of Alaska. That was her name. And <laughs> wow. these girls were all dressed in white sequin sparkles, rhinestone feathers, the full, like, when you think of drag. And all of a sudden, it hit me. The reason I didn't click with the other shows is, one, I didn't see anybody that had the same skin color as me. Mm -hmm. Two, they were wearing, you know, we were poor teenagers. They were wearing pedestrian clothes that they bought at the mall. So to see black girls dazzling in their diamonds, I was like, ding, 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 ding. And so that was when I realized I can do that. And then they reached, they said, hey, who wants to be a drag queen, you know, one time? And I just raised my hand. So they really took me and molded me, told me, taught me. And that's, I learned then how to, you know, pay it forward, give it back. Um, when people need help, if they... I don't want to say if they deserve it, if you know they're going to appreciate it and they're going to actually use that and then to be able to reach out and help others. And I just love that. I've worked with children and the youth my whole adult life um, with the HIV camp, with uh, Cascade AIDS Project, HIV Kids Camp, and um, just the young queens at the underage club. And so it's great. And I, you just get this, this feeling, you're talking about the confidence, the more you help people and the more you help build up people, that builds yourself up without even realizing it. You're just like, you know, you don't want to go around patting yourself on the back, but you realize, look at that. Those kids are succeeding, and I had a small hand in that. And it feels so good. It feels so good. It feels so good. Yeah. Well, we're going to do a lot of feel-good stuff today. Oh, I can hardly wait. We get a massage? <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can talk Bobby, call on David Bobby? and Bobby behind the scenes. But yeah, rub me out. <laughs> oh, wait, rub me down. No, What's well, I don't know. You know what? We'll be we'll right be back. back. <laughs> <laughs> we know that we have the beauty and brilliance to positively shape our lives. Unfortunately, racism, continuous displacement, and discrimination have created barriers to our success. So, if you feel invisible and you're not being heard, if the social, emotional, and educational needs of your kids aren't being met. We want you to know we are here. We see you. We hear you. We are ready to walk with you on your journey to success. More situations and conversations with the fabulous Poison Waters. I am the situation. You are, you are a whole situation, okay? And a whole conversation. Uh, all the time. Always talking, always talking. <laughs> Do you notice every time I, I'm like, ooh. Yeah. Well, you know, you when know you're around sequins, you just want to be bigger. Everybody wants to be bigger and more glamorous and more drag, you I know? I just love it. I just love you so much. Oh, thank okay, you. I'm so excited because we are going to be together later on this yes, week. Yes, we are. Thursday. On Thursday, yeah. Yes, okay, so for a fashion show. Now, I have to take your lead on this. Okay. Because I I just got a call, like, just follow Poison yeah. Waters' lead. And I said, okay, if I can be on the same stage as Poison Waters, I'm That's just right. so happy. Oh, my gosh. Well, let me tell you. So this is called, the fashion sh show is called Shift. 
and it's an experiment in fashion, and it's a program of young audiences of Oregon and Southwest Washington. So what it is basically, to break it down, is children, youth designers collaborating with, the des with adult designers in the fashion industry to create a garment. Well, we have done this before, but this year is the first year we're doing Kids for Queens. All of the garments are being designed specifically for drag queens. No, okay, yeah. that is amazing. Yeah, it's so exciting. So let's go back a couple of years. Um, so we had Shift. It was the first year. And, of course, I was the fabulous MC. And um, they had children of all ages, all, you know, grade school and middle school and everything. And it wasn't even all just kids then. There was even some adult designers. But they would collaborate and they would design a, a, a garment and so this one little boy he made this lady this fabulous ball gown out of i don't know what it was garbage bag paper oh, plates wow. dixie cups i don't know but <laughs> it just looked so good on her are you serious <laughs> yes oh and, my so, gosh. and so then it, my job was to interview and so i had to interview the kids and they said you know you know what's your inspiration and what was the process and this little boy was so well spoken he was just like i don't even know like in the fourth grade maybe or the fifth grade he was just this little thing and he just was talking so well about this garment he really knew about fashion and you know the body and you have to just yeah. i said do you want to make an outfit for me like right in the front of everybody and he's like yeah and his face lit up and i'm like okay and i just said i said we're going to do kids for queens because all these kids are going to make me a new outfit and then we went on with the show so um, we have myself and five of the drag queens from uh, Salem, Portland area. And I chose them all specifically for, um, so it's, it's a rainbow of color and, and nationality and sizes and heights. And it's just gonna be a little something for everybody. And then we all got matched up with teams of kids from uh, a third grade level all the way to like eighth and ninth grade. Third grade? Third graders. Can you imagine if I was in the third grade and they said, <laughs> little Kevin, you can make an outfit for a drag queen and here's, you know, and now, you know, everybody knows what drag queens are. Back then I'd have been like, what's that? Right. But everybody knows and with RuPaul's Drag Race and Darcell's Notoriety, everything, you know. So these kids are loving drag. So to have that opportunity as a child just is just mind blowing, you know, just opens opens you up to so much, you know, so many new things. And I just know the parents when I see that I saw some of the parents with the kids at some of our fittings and they're just so proud of their kids that are just doing this, you know. And so uh, we all have a different look. We all had different teams. It's not a contest, but it's a contest. I was going to say, and are yeah, you sure? Because right, anytime no, you're right, involved, it, there's got to right, be a supreme right. queen. And, and, that's, and that's me. <laughs> and also, anytime any drag queens, we're always competing against each other just walking down the street. So <laughs> to have these costumes being made for us, these garments. And so you ready for this? So we have um, like used uh, like cardboard, duct tape. Um, a uh, uh, dis what what does it call it when you tear torn apart gown put back together but completely different like distress distra yep mm -hmm. all that and you want to know what hmm. there's casters involved like for you know wheels are you serious there's plywood involved in one of the girls looks there is you know the big long um, clear bags that the wedding dresses come in oh yes this one chick got about a thousand of them on her dress. They, so these kids got really creative with all these recycled materials, and it's just so neat to see their creativity, to see their excitement, right. and then the fact that they get to not just, you know, we the drag queens, besides the fact that we're the models and we get to wear it, and we got to, you know, tell the kids kind of what our aesthetic was or whatever, they're really being mentored by these adult professional designers. So my um, team, the um, professional designers are from... Um, Adidas and Nike, and they came together, which I thought was very bipartisan. And they're working together, bringing the, the people together. The they're bringing them together. Oh my goodness! And see, that's poison waters. That's that's my job. I told and you. And then my uh, my sweet eighth grade uh, two kids, they um, all four made this amazing outfit, and the colors just blow your mind. So I already won. But then my other <laughs> friends that are in wood and plastic and. Oh, wheels. wow. Wait, so now, let me, so let me understand. So this wheels. is a virtual, of wheels, that's a lot. But not unusual. Right. We can figure it out. Right. This is a virtual event, right? right? Okay, so how can people So it's going to be um, on Thursday, this Thursday, the, the 13th, and it's uh, 6 to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. 
Is it 6.30 p.m.? I had to look at Are my, we right? I okay, like, wait a minute. <laughs> and so, um, and it's online, and it's a free um, free event. We're going to have all of the information on this broadcast right. with, with the um, website and all that. So you just register for free, and you can, it's a great opportunity to um, connect with your friends and locally that you haven't gotten to see. Say, you know, hey, let's meet on this, on this Zoom call. Let's watch this event. Mm -hmm. Or um, friends from across the country or really around the world. So we have um, all of the team built these garments from the ground up. And then we each got to uh, have these uh, little fashion moments, our little fashion uh, fashion runway, and we put it all together. And so it's all going to be together on Thursday night. So you and I will be there yes. live and in person, and we're going to be talking about the fashions and the, the designers and the teams. And you just won't believe these looks. They're really fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's also a fundraiser for young audiences. Yes, I was gonna so ask there'll you be about plenty that. of opportunity throughout the evening to um you can't bid on the items it's not an auction everybody always wants to buy you want to buy things right off me you just can't do that i mean you know, why you, not because well, you don't want to see all this walking out of here at the end of the day <laughs> you it needs to stay covered but um as the drag queens um we all get to keep our garments which is really fun to have you know something new made oh wow. tarot cards that's the, what the other girl's outfit is made of There's tarot cards outfit, really yes and i don't really think about tarot cards but i hope she don't try to read me with them cards because i'll be like <laughs> no what you're saying i think you'll be doing all the reading mm -hmm, you'll like, be reading mm -hmm. it all the way so up and down it's really good so it's a really <laughs> fantastic thursday's event is uh it's family friendly it's age appropriate it's for all it's for all to see to come and see what these young folks have done there's beautiful videos wonderful interviews you get to know the kids that um, design, you get to meet the drag queens before and after. Um, it's really a fantastic event. And again, it is a fundraiser, so there'll be a few opportunities throughout the night to help support okay. programs like this, the um, Shift and Right Brain Initiative. We're going to do this again. We're gonna, so this is another opportunity. What's gonna happen is I know is kids are gonna see this and be like, I wanna do that you know next it. year. You well, that's it. okay because I need about three or four outfits, so I need to have several teams. <laughs> And yes, the fun, now the money goes to arts for the young people, right? Yes, Young Audiences of um, Oregon and Washington is uh, is a local chapter of a national organization. Mm -hmm. Young Audiences is a national organization, and it's helping get um, kids and art put together. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily putting the art programs in the schools, which is very important, but getting kids to have art in their hands, in their lives, in their experiences, whether it's getting them in the seats to see a live performance or getting them the tools and materials to create art themselves. I love it. Well, we we know art is life. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. this is so important. I can't yeah. wait to see. Oh, it's going to be, be so right good. right next to you on that say I don't know, you, are you going to have on cardboard? Are you having on the yeah, outfit? That you're going to have to wait and see. And first of all, I'm not, no, I'm not a cardboard chick. Not, <laughs> nothing on my outfit came from the Home Depot or the U-Haul rental store, okay? That's those other chicks. <laughs> That makes you the supreme queen. I am the queen. supreme. Listen, oh I, I told my team, you can put me in anything you want as long as I have final. No, I didn't have final approval. <laughs> but I said, but I don't really. Let's 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 think glamorous. Yes. Because you know I don't, I'm not an indus, industrial person. Some of these outfits is industrial. Oh, it's like post-apocalyptic. No, I don't do that. Oh, well, I can't wait. We'll have to wait and see it's on gonna Thursday. Be good. It's gonna be good. I don't know it's what I'm good. wearing, but I better step my game up. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. I can bring you a couple things. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're going to hang out for some viewer questions. Oh my God, yes? I'm so excited. Yes, because I have I have so many secrets. I'm just itching yeah, to, right. to let them come out. You are an open book, but we don't know what they're going to ask. That's so right, I can hardly wait. We'll wait and see. We'll be right back with more Situations and Conversations after a quick break. Yay! I situations and Conversations with Trey Renee is sponsored by Black Parent Initiative. Learning and growing together so families can thrive. Education Explorers. Parents, with companies starting to bring people back into the office and workspace, count on Education Explorers for safe, quality, reliable, and culturally sound child care. They have low to no cost spaces available for infants and children up to four years old at their two locations in Tigard. Contact them online at educationexplorershcc.com or give them a call at 971-266-3646. Furniture and decor provided by Home Place Furniture and Design. Get all your furniture and design needs at Home Place Furniture and Design with two locations in Oregon to serve you. Wardrobe for Trey Renee, that's me, provided by Janelle James Boutique, located at Bridgeport Village in Tigard. Styling services were provided by Don Cannon. Hey, welcome back to Situations and Conversations. We are clearly having a lot of fun 
with you, but also behind the scenes with the fabulous, I have to do it all, fabulous <laughs> Poison Wars hanging out with us today. Oh my gosh, so fun. This oh has been great. Oh my gosh, I can't take it. I know, I want to live my here. I just want to live here. <laughs> uh, well, that's actually, that's how I keep my, um, my flat abs is all that laughing, <laughs> except my abs are not a six pack. It's more like a keg. Stop it. I got a Stop. Corona belly. <laughs> Stop. I got Corona no, belly. No, no, no. Listen, we're going to have so much fun oh my God. On, on Thursday. But listen, guess what else is happening Thursday? What? So I have to clarify. So, you know, I said there's not an auction because uh, you can't buy the garments off the girls' clothes, off their outfits. But there actually is an online auction component. You know, I said it was oh, a fundraiser yay, for yes. audiences. So folks can go online, again, register for free to come just to watch us. Come just to watch us and then get sucked in and excited. And then you're going to, you know, donate and we're going to yes. get you to spend all your money. No, there's fabulous um, auction items for you to get. And I always say, people say, oh, I don't really like things at auction. I say the gift giving season will be here before you know it. Win something, support a charity, and then give it away if you that's don't want right. it. It's that's right. That's what I would deductible. say. Yeah. That, oh, tax. Okay, remember Ooh. that part. Ooh, I was supposed to do my taxes, wasn't I? Uh-oh. Uh, anyway. It might be a little, well, no, well, not yet. No, I, I got yet. time. They I got time. a little extension. Ah, ah, Just a little bit. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, but, now I'm nervous. What, what's these questions, girl? Oh, yeah, so it's time for the viewer questions. Okay. I know, you're always ready. Oh, please. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. What's the first viewer question? Hey, Trey. A student sent in this question. Do you always dress up? Or only for shows? For me, this is work. Yeah. It's a costume, it's a uniform. But I mean, I love it. I love getting yeah. to choose and, and pick and, and help make, I don't know how to make my stuff, but I help design and have okay. my folks, my people that, my people, you know, create for me and stuff. So no, um, people do think I'm sitting at home in a ball gown, eating bonbons, right. watching The Real Housewives. Not the case? I, well, I am, but not in a, not in a gown. <laughs> it's just in my boxer shorts and an old t-shirt. Got you, okay. Now, let me ask you this. This is not a viewer question. This is one of my questions. How long does it take for you to get this fabulous? Well, it used to take, when I first started, like three hours. And then I'm like, no, this, that's dumb. So, you know, it, at Darcel's, our dressing room is downstairs. Mm -hmm. It's below the club. So we learned the quicker you get in drag, the sooner you get to be upstairs where the bar is. So that's, ah. it's like, it's like the horse and the carrot. Right. So you're like, I'm getting ready so I can go get that drink. <laughs> so um, I can get ready, I'd like an hour, then, it, then I just don't feel rushed. I've gotten ready in 15 minutes. And You're kidding me. Yeah, and get them gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah, sometimes if you, you sometimes you just have to. Wow. Because well, either yeah, for I whatever guess. reason. But I like to I like to plan. I like to be ready. I usually have, I know what I'm going to wear. I know mm -hmm. which hair. So that doesn't take up any time. But yeah, the makeup part, I could do it in 15 minutes if I had to, which is not, I know I shouldn't brag about that. Because some people are like, you should take a little longer. <laughs> no, that's amazing. That's a good thing. That's yeah. okay. But now we know. Okay, now we so know. We have, now I have this, by the way, I have this whole visual of you sitting at home eating bonbons in your boxers. Oh, I don't, well, I don't know that I want to have that visual, it, but it. it is there. Soak it up. This is, this is. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby's okay. been thinking about it. <laughs> All right. Let's get the next viewer question. Hey, Trey. A student asked, what advice do you have for kids who feel different and are afraid to express themselves. I didn't know how to express myself. I knew I was different, but I didn't know how. And I didn't know that it was wrong. I mean, obviously it wasn't wrong. Later as you grow up and things uh, turn, you know, when anything turns to, you know, body development and, and sexual, everybody turns that to naughtiness, you know, and that's not, that's not it. Just being, you know, different and unique. I learned just by, you know, we talk about my confidence, my confidence when I first started it was a it was pretend like I'm gonna pretend that I'm not bothered by any of this stuff I'm gonna pretend that I'm doing so good right now the way everything is mm -hmm. and then I started to believe it and then the more I believed it the more I you know it, it happened and it, I, I manifested it right. and so you know I, I always think to it's not good to keep things to yourself and I think if you find a you know if a, if a youth finds a trusted adult or, um, you know, even one of their contemporaries to, you know, explain and share what they have with, you know, when you're being open and honest, though, you have to be really careful about who you're talking to because you want to talk to the wrong mouth that's going to tell all your business if you're just still trying to figure it out for yourself. Right. So I think finding a trusted person that you can share with and then also just building your own confidence, even if you have to pretend at first, yeah, it catches up. Fake it till you make it, right? Fake it till you make it. And, you know, that whole... Uh, there was a campaign years ago about it gets better. And I used to kind of think, oh, that sounds cliche. But then when I really started doing some work um, with youth groups and talking about my story and my journey, I'm like, yeah, I remember being a kid going, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And then realizing, wait, 
like junior high is a blip in time. High school is a blip in time. All of a sudden now I'm 52 and I'm like, this is the, I'm living my best life. This is so fantastic. What took so long for me to get here? <laughs> yeah, right, you know what I mean? Right. And all the stuff that I thought was bad or, or rough, it, all, it really kind of helped me. They were all lessons, helped me learn how to be a better person, how to not treat people. You know, just because I was treated a certain way doesn't mean that doesn't give me permission to treat somebody else that way. It gives me, it taught me to be more empathetic um, and aware of others. And I think that's really helped me as an adult. That's great. I think that's going to help a lot of people. Yeah. Even not just young people. Right. But a grown ups. Right. Yeah. yeah. Who still struggle. Yeah. With their confidence. And, yeah. You know, faking it till you make it. Yeah. All right. Do we have one last question? Oh, no, I'm nervous. Hey, Trey. One student wanted to know. What was the biggest obstacle you had to face as a drag queen? The biggest obstacle I had to face as a drag queen was me. Was my, I'm my own obstacle. And I think most people are getting that, um, that inner voice to calm down. Like, you're not good enough. You're not people. I was, I'm always worried about what everybody's thinking. Like, oh, they're thinking. First, I used to be really, really skinny. Oh, everybody thinks you're too skinny. Now, I, you know, I've gained weight. Oh, everybody thinks you're too big. Oh, and um, I actually just did. Um, I always think I, the word too, T-O-O, -O, it's kind of haunting me my whole life. You're too loud. You, you, you walk too fast. You talk too fast. You're too feminine. You're too this. You're too big. You're too that. Mm -hmm. And so um, that obstacle that I had was getting rid of that too, turning that too into a positive. And I just did an event with Body Vox where um, I helped them put together a piece. And it was based on my journey coming up from a young boy to where I am right now and um, just all the things that I had to um, overcome and we actually ended up naming the piece two. Oh, that is so precious. Yeah. I never thought about all the twos in one's There's life. There's so many twos. And you know, me as an adult now, I love there's no such thing as too much cheese. Too much wine, too much pizza. And so I'm like, why is two a negative word? And growing up, it was a negative word to me. I was always told, too, you're too this, you're too that. You're doing too much of something. So it always was like a negative thing to me. And I'm like, wait, but T-O-O -O means more. What, well, don't we all want more? Around, so right? I flipped it around. Flipped it around. around. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love you. Oh, you I love you too. This. You're so sweet. Oh my gosh. I cannot <laughs> wait for Thursday. Oh my gosh. I wanted to hurry up and get here. Well, it'll be here and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to wear because you're always looking so fly and I want to, you know, be cute too, but I'm not going to be wearing another recycled gowns. I mean, <laughs> that's for the fashion show. I'll come out and, you know, Yes, you know, it's we'll be see. Fabulous. I, I now it. watch. I should just come in with some cardboard and some roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, here Boxers I go. Boxers and bonbons. Boxers and bonbons. That's a whole thing. We oh, should that. start a whole thing. Okay, well, I can hardly <gasps> this wait. Sounds like a new event. Boxers and bonbons. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guess what? You guys can hang out with us on Thursday. We're doing the ship fashion show. And I say we. It's really poison water. No, we're, we're doing it together. I'm going to be there. The doing, I'm going to be your little minion. Yeah. We'll do whatever it is you need me to do. I'm going to make sure I wear a train. You can carry it behind me. Like, <laughs> I'm Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> I'll be more than happy to do it. All right. Thank I can you hardly so wait. For Thanks for having me today. This has been so fun. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Another great episode. Thank you so much, you guys, for hanging out with us. You know that I love and appreciate you for it. God willing. We will be back together again very, very soon. But until then, you know what to do. When you think me, think we. See ya! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Situations and Conversations with Trey Renee is sponsored by Black Parent Initiative, growing at the speed of relationships. Education Explorers, culturally sound, quality childcare you can count on. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.